In the ongoing exploration of our universe, every journey begins with the eye. Only the eye can travel to the stars and beyond, far outpacing the meager reach of any human astronaut or probe. Chasing the ancient light of distant galaxies back to the dawn of cosmic history. In this epic journey of discovery, no eye been more revealing and more awe-inspiring than the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble is not the largest telescope ever built, but it is the first large telescope ever to fly in space. This unique vantage point, high above the blurring effects of Earth's atmosphere, is the perfect perch for exploring everything from nearby planets to distant galaxies. Unlike telescopes on Earth, the Hubble can't be maintained and improved on a routine basis. Astronomers can't just drive to the Hubble to give it a tune-up. Instead, the telescope depended on visits from the space shuttle and its crew to make repairs and install new cameras. This is not an easy task, and missions to the Hubble have been among the most challenging and exciting in the history of human spaceflight. And then, on February 1, 2003, disaster struck. The space shuttle Columbia was lost taking the lives of seven astronauts. Columbia's mission was not related to the Hubble, but its loss was to have a profound impact on the space telescope. After the accident, the remaining space shuttles were grounded, which postponed a fifth and final mission to bring new cameras and replacement parts to the Hubble. Two years later, even with new safety measures in place and the shuttles heading back into orbit, the Hubble repair mission was officially off the schedule. The reason was human safety. The Columbia disaster demonstrated how dangerous a space shuttle mission can be. Hubble's supporters were deeply disappointed. Without human support, it seemed Hubble's great eye on the universe would close forever. The telescope would slowly shut down and, in time, come crashing back to Earth. But scientists asked NASA to reconsider its decision. Flight engineers began working on scenarios that would involve one shuttle going to the telescope with another one ready on the launch pad in case of a problem. And by late 2006, with confidence in the shuttle program restored, NASA was ready to try to save the Hubble. The job would not be easy. During the years that the shuttle was grounded, the Hubble was showing signs of age. Its cameras were malfunctioning. Batteries and gyroscopes that were essential for powering and pointing the telescope were failing too. As engineers began to visualize the sequence of repairs that would be needed to restore the telescope to its full operations, it soon became clear that this would be the most ambitious mission to the Hubble ever attempted. A giant pool with a full-sized mock-up of the Hubble was used to simulate the weightlessness of space. Discover the past with exclusive history documentaries and ad-free podcasts 
presented by world-renowned historians, all from History Hit. Watch them on your smart TV or on the go with your mobile device. Download the app now to explore everything from the wonders of ancient Pompeii and the mystery of the princes in the tower to the life of Anne Boleyn and D-Day. Sign up via the link in the description. Meanwhile, Hubble's new parts were brought out of the clean room and readied for launch. They included a pair of new cameras designed to transform the space telescope and image the universe as never before. The Wide Field Camera 3 is a versatile multi-wavelength detector capable of imaging distant objects across a broad spectrum of colors. Also on deck was the Cosmic Origins Spectrograph, designed to use the light of distant sources as a way to probe the large-scale distribution of matter throughout the universe. Finally, on May 11, 2009, the rescue mission was underway. Seven, six, three, two, one, and lift off on Space Shuttle of Lights. One visit to enhance the vision of Hubble into the deepest grandeur of our universe. Bypass across the board, Scooter, no action. Houston, Houston Atlanta for Star Tracker. Scooter, go ahead for Star Tracker. We see that star approaching uh, from the east. Hey, that's terrific news. Uh, I guess the last time we've seen Hubble up close was March of 02. Yeah, from Houston Atlanta, uh, 200 feet. No previous Houston, servicing Houston. mission had ever demanded so much of astronauts in such a short time. Houston Atlantis, Hubble has arrived on board Atlantis with the arm. By now, it was more than seven years since someone had visited the telescope, and the Hubble was badly in need of attention. Coming out. Yeah, I'm just looking out the window here, and it's an unbelievably beautiful sight. Uh, amazingly, the exterior of Hubble, an old man of 19 years in space, still looks in fantastic shape. Installing the wide field camera was challenging, but straightforward. The new camera was built to fit neatly into the space left by its predecessor. Look good. Look good to me. I definitely got it. Excellent. The Cosmic Origins spectrograph fit into another space, previously taken up by a device once used to correct the built-in flaw in Hubble's optics. All of Hubble's new instruments now correct the optics automatically. This one feels like it won't still flush on the plate. What kind of curves do you think Hubble will throw you? I don't know. It's been uh, Dave's surprises each day. Maybe no more away, right only. The most challenging fix of all was to Hubble's advanced camera for surveys. Since it was installed in 2002, the ACS had created some of Hubble's most spectacular images. A few more turns to get it but a short the... circuit knocked out the camera after five productive years. Now astronauts would try to get it back. Card one is out. <laughs> nice. I heard that. Thank you. Great, John. Nice job. Nice job, John. Incredibly, the repair went without a hitch. The ACS was back online and with the replacement of batteries and gyroscopes as well as other repairs completed, the space telescope was ready to return to work. It was time to say goodbye to Hubble. My controller's off. Oh, baby, look at that. What a beautiful spaceship we're on, guys. It's a real privilege to get to see what we're seeing and get to work on this magnificent machine. Hubble isn't just a satellite. It's about humanity's quest for knowledge. And that's what C. Clark says. The only way of finding the limits of the possible is by going beyond them into the impossible. No one would ever see the Hubble this close again. 
what astronomers would see through the Hubble's new and improved cameras was yet to come. Like a dandelion, adrift in a field of stars, a small cloudy patch of light in the southern constellation Centaurus draws the eye. This is Omega Centauri. Located some 16,000 light years from Earth, it is a vast congregation of stars known as a globular cluster. It formed more than 10 billion years ago and now moves through space like a cloud of fireflies as it orbits the center of our Milky Way galaxy. For astronomers, globular clusters are like laboratories, tailor-made for studying the evolution and dynamics of stars. That made Omega Centauri an ideal target for testing the new power of a restored Hubble Space Telescope. In this image, taken soon after Hubble's dramatic repair in May 2009, the telescope's new wide-field camera peers through millions of stars to reveal the cluster's sparkling heart. The star's dazzling colors offer a clue to their history. As expected, most are yellow or red indicating these stars are entering their old age after shining for billions of years. But the blue stars, which are much hotter, seem a mystery because blue stars should be very young. Astronomers now suspect some of these blue stars are the result of stellar collisions and mergers. The amazing clarity with which Hubble can view these stars also gives astronomers a window into the future. By comparing this image with earlier images of Omega Centauri, Hubble can see that the stars have moved. And by extrapolating those motions, astronomers can simulate a 10,000-year timeline, showing how the stars will migrate as each follows its own course. Since Hubble was first launched, one of its great achievements has been to reveal, in stunning and colorful detail, the complex cycle of life and death among stars. Now, with its new wide-field camera in place, Hubble is showing us this process as never before. Here we see in the death of a single star, a celestial metamorphosis. Its energy spent, the star has blown off its outer layers, forming what looks like a cosmic butterfly. The details in this image reveal that stellar death is a multi-stage process, with gas ejected at different times and at different speeds to form a remarkably complex shape. The details are important because the material ejected by dying stars is ultimately what will be recycled into new stars and new solar systems, including some with planets capable of developing and supporting life. Elsewhere, in the Carina Nebula, Hubble spies the fiery formation of new suns inside a vast and churning cloud of interstellar gas and dust. 7,500 light years away, this is one of the brightest and most spectacular star forming regions in our neck of the Milky Way galaxy. As Hubble zooms in, a blazing tapestry of glowing gas gives way to a more detailed look at a single pillar of dust, three light years long, nestled within the nebula. Powerful stellar winds are gradually eroding the pillar, which acts as a cocoon, 
protecting a cache of newly formed stars and planets within. With its infrared capability, Hubble's wide-field camera can peer inside the Carina Nebula and reveal hidden details. Here, the infrared view reveals high-speed jets of ionized gas, which point back to a newborn star within the cloud. The jets are a telltale sign of stellar birth, and they signal the arrival of a new solar system on the cosmic stage. Peering out at the large Magellanic Cloud, a companion galaxy that orbits the Milky Way, Hubble can see the entire pageant of stellar birth and death in one image. This is the Tarantula Nebula, one of the most active star-forming regions found anywhere in space. Here, a cluster of freshly minted blue supergiant stars light up a vast complex of interstellar gas with their intense energy. Many of these stars are burning so ferociously, they will one day be gone as quickly as they came. Exploding as supernovas bright enough to be seen on Earth without a telescope. In the process, they will cook the matter in their cores, spewing out the heaviest elements in nature, like iron, nickel, gold, and silver, enriching the large Magellanic Cloud with the same kinds of atoms that, in our galaxy, have been crucial to the development of civilization. With its improved powers of perception, the Hubble has again become the best way for astronomers to trace the ebb and flow of atoms in our own galaxy. But what Hubble is ideally built to do is tell us a story on a grander scale the birth of the galaxies. That's why, once Hubble's vision was restored, astronomers were keen to point the telescope out to the farthest reaches of space. Before the Hubble, the youthful days of our universe were off limits to astronomers. Of course, it's possible to look back in time simply by peering far off into space. Because the light from distant galaxies needs time to reach us, we can see those objects not as they are today, but as they once were long ago. The trouble is, even looking at galaxies that are millions of light years away, isn't enough to see what the universe was like at an earlier stage, when astronomers think most galaxies formed. To do that, a telescope needs to look back about 10 billion light years, and Hubble has been doing just that. Some of the best views of this elusive period come from the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, a sampling of the universe at the very limit of Hubble's perception. To achieve the Ultra Deep Field, Hubble literally spent days staring into empty space. As the extremely faint light of distant galaxies began to build up on Hubble's sensitive detectors, an astonishing picture of the early universe began to emerge. What Hubble found is that at these great distances, galaxies tend to be smaller and more distorted in shape. 
This tantalizing result means that Hubble is beginning to see back to an era when the galaxies were still forming, mere adolescents on their way to becoming the grand star systems we see today. Since its repair, Hubble has returned to the ultra-deep field and again gone diving into this cosmic well, this time using the infrared capability of the Wide Field Camera 3. The effort has yielded Hubble's most distant finds to date, a handful of tiny galaxies that appear to be a staggering 13 billion light years away. This not only breaks a record, it tells astronomers that the earliest galaxies must have formed quickly, already springing into existence before the universe was 5% its current age. With this incredible feat, the reborn Hubble Space Telescope has now put us on the threshold of the birth of galaxies, one of the great milestones of cosmic history. To actually see the galaxies being born, astronomers know they'll have to go one step further and another space telescope will have to get them there. Currently, the James Webb Space Telescope, Hubble's direct successor, is scheduled for launch in 2018. By then, Hubble will have finished its long and incredibly successful mission. Rarely has one instrument done so much to change our understanding of the universe. With its newly restored and improved eye on the cosmos, Hubble is not only becoming a legend in its own time, it's setting the course for the next era of cosmic discovery. It has been more than four centuries since human eyes first gazed at the heavens through a telescope. Since then, the telescope has transformed our understanding so deeply. It is almost as though the universe itself has changed before our eyes. The wandering planets, once no more than bright lights in the sky, have become entire worlds, each with its own unique features. Faint patches of light have morphed into spectacular nebulas, where new solar systems are born by the thousands. or giant galaxies gracefully flying through the cosmos millions of light years in the distance. The universe itself has proved to be far larger and more ancient than our ancestors ever imagined. In this century, Two questions have set the course for our telescopic exploration of the universe. The first is about the origins of the universe itself. How did all of this get here? And what are the conditions that allowed the universe to evolve from an initial explosive event, 
known as the Big Bang, into its present form with stars, galaxies, black holes, dark matter, and more. The second question has to do with our own origins and whether the conditions that led to our emergence here on Earth are common enough elsewhere in space to allow us to find other worlds harboring civilizations like our own. The tools that will allow astronomers to get at these questions are nothing short of extraordinary. They are telescopes, but telescopes larger and more penetrating than any ever built. Some will be built on Earth. Others will orbit in space. Together, they will allow us to see farther than humans have ever seen before. To understand how, consider the Hubble Space Telescope, currently astronomers' state-of-the-art instrument for exploring the universe. The Hubble is really a sophisticated light catcher. It uses its giant primary mirror to grab as much light as it can from distant objects and then focuses that light to produce an image. Looking far beyond the stars of our own galaxy, Hubble's big mirror catches enough light to see very faint galaxies billions of light years away. But galaxies quickly become fainter and are invisible to Hubble beyond this point. So to see more and see farther, astronomers are developing the James Webb Space Telescope. This is a light catcher par excellence, with a primary mirror that covers six times the surface area of Hubble's. Any telescope that big is certain to take astronomy to a new level. But getting such a giant into orbit is no small feat. For starters, it's already too big for any rocket to carry. That's why, instead of a single primary mirror like Hubble, the James Webb Space Telescope will use 18 smaller, precisely aligned mirrors that will connect together like a honeycomb after the telescope is launched. These smaller mirrors are also easier to produce and lighter to carry into space. But size alone is not enough. Even with a big mirror like this, the universe makes the most distant galaxies nearly impossible to see. This is because the expansion of the universe pulls the galaxies away from us and shifts their light toward the red end of the spectrum. The very farthest galaxies have been shifted so much they shine not in visible light, but in the infrared. So, to have a hope of seeing even further than Hubble, the James Webb Space Telescope will be tuned to see the heavens in infrared light. This is perfect for observing the distant universe. And it has to be perfect. Because unlike the Hubble, which is much closer to Earth, the James Webb Space Telescope will be too far away for astronauts to reach. That means the telescope will have to work all on its own with no hope of repair if something goes wrong. Technicians are carefully assembling the telescope. When it's ready, it will be folded up like an elaborate umbrella and launched into space. After a month-long journey, the telescope will unfurl 
Slowly and methodically, the various components will unpack themselves. The sunshade will unroll. And the solar panels, much larger than Hubble's, to compensate for a more distant and weaker sun, will deploy. Finally, the gold-coated segments of the mirror array will open like the petals of a flower and click into place, ready to direct light into the telescope's detectors. All that will be left to do then is to look and let the universe reveal itself. The launch of this ambitious telescope will be a major achievement, but it will only herald the start of a new era. To see where that era will lead us next, our quest for bigger and even better telescopes will bring us back down to Earth. Perched on lonely mountaintops in distant corners of the globe, the world's great astronomical observatories seem to exist between two realities, the terrestrial and the celestial. The largest observatories are finely honed operations, more like astronomy factories than lonely outposts. They use sophisticated optical techniques to help cancel out the effects of Earth's atmosphere. As a result, the biggest telescopes on Earth have come to complement and rival the Hubble telescope in space. But now astronomers have come to the limits of what the largest observatories on Earth can see. To see the birth of the galaxies and to look for planets forming around other stars, the next generation of telescopes must be larger, far larger than anything ever built. Today, three projects are leading the way, setting the stage for the next wave of great observatories. Each has its own unique design and location, but all will be built to address the same underlying need, collecting as much light from the distant universe as possible. This is a technical challenge of the highest order. For the giant Magellan Telescope, the answer is to combine seven of the largest mirrors possible and hold them together so they can operate as one single super mirror 24 and a half meters across. Like an alien flower, the giant Magellan Telescope will turn its petals skyward to gather starlight from the summit of Las Campanas, a spectacular mountain location in Chile. The estimated cost is $700 million. Pushing the limits even farther, a consortium of nations is planning the TMT, the 30-meter telescope. At a cost of $1 billion, it will be built on Mauna Kea and dwarf the other large telescopes that already crowd Hawaii's tallest mountain. Unlike the giant Magellan Telescope, the TMT will not consist of a few large mirrors working together, Instead, following from the design of the nearby Keck telescope, it will view the heavens with a mosaic of 492 mirror segments, each just over a meter across.
so equipped, TMT will be able to pursue its key goal of investigating the early universe. From the birth of the first stars, to the formation of the galaxies. An even larger telescope is now being planned by the European Southern Observatory in Chile. It's called the EELT, short for European Extremely Large Telescope. Like TMT, it will also use a segmented mirror, but in this case made up of nearly 1,000 individual segments, all fitting together to create a light-gathering surface that is a whopping 42 meters across. At an estimated cost of $1.4 billion, this would be, by far, the largest telescope ever constructed. It will be located on Cerro Armazones, one of the most promising locations in Chile, and perhaps the best mountain in the world that does not yet have a major observatory on it. But the EELT will far exceed previous telescopes in its ability to see the early universe. Its instruments will also specialize in identifying the signatures of different chemical elements, helping to identify the ingredients from which the first stars and galaxies were made. As well as look for signs of molecules important for life in the atmospheres of planets around other stars. All three of the new giant telescopes could be in operation by 2020, though this will depend on funding. Plan is they will work together with and follow up on discoveries made by the James Webb Space Telescope. They will also be engineering and scientific marvels, monuments to our innate desire to learn about the universe around us. But above all, they will be doorways to future understanding. The tools that will help us discern hidden clues to the nature of the universe. And the riddle of life. And point the way forward into the infinite unknown. The next generation of telescopes, both on Earth and in space, promise to help answer two of the most important questions we have ever asked about the universe. Where did all of this come from? And are we alone? These questions are not new. What is new are two surprising finds that suggest exciting answers may lie just out of the reach of current technology. These findings are now helping fuel the push for new instruments of astonishing size and ambition. The first surprise is the discovery of dark energy, a term that astronomers have coined for something they barely understand. Simply put, dark energy is a property of space itself. It seems to exist everywhere, and yet cannot be measured directly anywhere. It was discovered by looking at a type of supernova a brilliant explosion that is triggered when a massive star starts pouring vast quantities of hot gas onto a small, dense companion known as a white dwarf. Once the burden on the white dwarf reaches a critical limit, it becomes unstable and suddenly erupts, generating enough light to outshine an entire galaxy. 
Then, by comparing both the motions and the distances of many supernovas, astronomers can see if the expansion of the universe has changed over time. When researchers first started doing this in the 1990s, they made an astounding discovery. The expansion of the universe is speeding up. That means most of the galaxies we observe are moving away from us and from each other faster and faster as time goes on. Something is causing this to happen, and that something is dark energy. One new telescope is ideally configured to probe this mystery. It's called the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, or LSST. While it's not as large as some of the other future telescopes currently on the drawing board, the LSST will have the largest field of view of any telescope it signs. Specially designed for a wide-angle perspective, it will take in vast swaths of the heavens all at once, managing to image the entire sky twice every week. All of this data will allow astronomers to look for and measure the effects of dark energy in multiple ways. Those measurements will help distinguish between different theories for what dark energy is and how it works. Theories that can eventually be tested by the much larger telescopes to come. The other question motivating the development of new telescopes is one that goes to the very heart of our existence. We know, because we are here, that life is possible. What we don't know is how likely life might be, and whether the odds favor us eventually making contact with other civilizations on distant worlds. One way to address that question is to find other places in the galaxy where life could be. That's why the discovery in the 1990s of planets orbiting nearby stars electrified astronomy and captured the public's imagination. So far, none of these planets share exactly the characteristics of Earth, including size, composition, and temperature. But NASA's Kepler spacecraft, currently in orbit, is capable of detecting other Earths. And when it does, larger telescopes will be needed to follow up. Astronomers are now considering how best to create a new kind of orbiting space telescope that will be able to zoom in on the other Earths that Kepler finds. To succeed, such a telescope will likely be both large and complex. Its job will be to tease out the faint light of an Earth-like planet from the billion times brighter light of the star it orbits. If it succeeds, that light can then be analyzed for signs that there are biologically important molecules in the planet's atmosphere. Like oxygen. Or water. Just a generation ago, astronomers would have thought such a feat virtually impossible, but it may only be a decade or two away. In the end, it is our curiosity about ourselves and our desire to find others like us that will drive the development of telescopes to even greater heights. With the telescopes of the future extending our vision even farther into the cosmos, it seems there is no end to what we may see.